folks, it's Jeff here. Just a quick reminder, if you're loving Disney Coast to Coast, there are a couple of easy ways that you can support the show. We'd love it if you could rate and review us on iTunes or wherever you listen to the show. This is a simple way to help other Disney fans find us. Also, go ahead and share your favorite episodes on social media and be sure to tag us. You can find all of our social media information at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. And finally, I just want to say thank you to all of you who listen every week. Your support is very appreciated, and we love that you're enjoying our Disney geekiness. Now on with the show. Is your magic meter running low? Well, we've got a cure for you. Welcome to Disney Coast to Coast. Hey folks, and welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, the ultimate unofficial Disney fan podcast. I'm Jeff DePauly, and in today's House of Mouse headlines, a popular eatery returns to the Disneyland Resort, a sneak peek is headed to both Disneyland and Walt Disney World, and a new VR experience is coming to The Void. That and so much more, so let's get to it. Hear the latest news from the Walt Disney Company in today's House of Mouse headlines. Our prayers have been answered. Talk about making lemonade out of lemons. The new Disneyland Resort Hotel may be indefinitely postponed, but Earl of Sandwich is returning. At least for a limited time. So get your taste buds ready for the holiday turkey sandwich at the Disneyland Resort once again. And next time around, when they close Earl of Sandwich, can we at least get the holiday turkey sandwich at some quick service restaurant in the parks? Pretty please? Speaking of delicious food at the Disneyland Resort, there is a specialty hot dog now available at Refreshment Corner at Disneyland Park that sounds like a must-try for the Halloween season. I'll preface this by saying that I don't particularly like hot dogs. If I'm at a summer barbecue with burgers and hot dogs, I'll always go for a burger over a hot dog. But this one sounds so unique that even I'd like to try it. It's called the Halloween Hot Dog, and it's topped with spicy meatballs, cheese sauce, and oven-roasted tomatoes. So basically, the toppings sound fantastic to me. Who knows? I may just order it without the hot dog. Over at Plaza de la Familia in Disney California Adventure, there's an updated show this Halloween season called A Musical Celebration of Coco, and I'm obsessed with it. Not just because I love the music in the film Coco, but because this show features one of the cutest puppets I've ever seen at a Disney park. The show features traditional mariachi music and performers, and essentially tells the story of the film Coco. But partway through the show, some life-size puppet skeletons come out strapped to a couple of performers' bodies. But it gets even better when a kid-sized Miguel puppet is brought out with his guitar. I'm telling you, I wish so badly that this Miguel puppet was sold in stores. It is absolutely adorable and super expressive, and I just love it. I'll include a video link in this episode description so that you can check it out for yourself. Over at the Sunset Showcase Theater in Disney California Adventure, as well as at Walt Disney Presents at Walt Disney World's Disney's Hollywood Studios, that's a mouthful, you'll be able to catch a sneak peek of The Nutcracker and The Four Realms beginning on October 5th. We've already been shown several trailers for this upcoming holiday film, but with a 12-minute extended look, it should certainly show us a bit more of what to expect from this movie before it's released in theaters on November 2nd. Also available at Walt Disney World and the Disneyland Resort, the long-rumored Wreck-It Ralph VR experience has now been confirmed. This fall, Disney fans will get to experience Ralph Breaks VR at the Void locations, which currently feature Star Wars Secrets of the Empire. If you'd like to hear more about the Void experience, you can listen to episode 537 of Disney Coast to Coast to hear about our visit to Secrets of the Empire. I really enjoyed the Star Wars experience, so I'm happy to see that there will be some new game options featuring different franchises for repeated visits. The cool thing about this is that apparently when Ralph Breaks VR becomes a gameplay option, Star Wars Secrets of the Empire will still be available as well. I think it's very cool that the Void will be able to feature more than one story option at a time. In addition to the Ralph announcement, they mentioned that a new VR experience will be launching in 2019 based on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In my opinion, virtual reality is the way to get Disney-themed experiences around the country in a way that they tried to do unsuccessfully with Disney Quest. With VR, you need less retail space and can make changes and updates much more easily. Although I don't personally believe that VR is going to take over the home entertainment arena as much as content producers may want, I do feel that VR will be popping up in malls all across the country and expanding way beyond its current availability. 
Over at Disney's Animal Kingdom, the Banshee Adoption Program has been very popular ever since the opening of Pandora, The World of Avatar. The Imagineers were careful to craft a story around the adoption process, and the Banshees were only available to be adopted at Wind Traders in Pandora. But the story of adopting these creatures are no longer a priority now that Disney has seen their overwhelming popularity and these toys flying off the shelves. No pun intended. You can now buy, as opposed to adopt, these Banshees at Island Mercantile on Discovery Island. The full adoption process will still be available at Wind Traders within Pandora, the world of Avatar. National Coffee Day is September 29th, and to celebrate, Walt Disney World will be offering $1 coffee at all of the Joffrey's Coffee kiosks in the parks and at Disney Springs. It's simple. Just mention National Coffee Day at the kiosk and receive a cup of hot or iced coffee for just $1. Can you even imagine what the lines would look like if Starbucks was taking part in this? There would need to be a Fast Pass option for that. Disney Cruise Line offers several excursions out of New York City headed to the Bahamas, Canada, Bermuda, and Florida. But if I'm headed to NYC to catch a cruise, you can bet your bottom dollar that I'd be catching at least one Broadway show before going aboard the ship. Now Disney Cruise Line has made it easier for you to catch one of your favorite Disney shows on Broadway, which currently include Aladdin, The Lion King, and their latest hit, Frozen. Disney Cruise Line has reserved tickets to these shows exclusively for its guests, so now you can include a Broadway show as part of your trip in addition to the live shows on board. Speaking of live shows, if you're in the Hollywood area and are looking for something to do the weekend before Halloween, The Nightmare Before Christmas will be returning to the Hollywood Bowl this October 26th and 27th. This performance will feature live-to-film performances from the original voices of Jack Skellington, performed by the film's composer Danny Elfman, Sally, performed by Catherine O'Hara, and Oogie Boogie, performed by Ken Page. I saw this production several years back when it premiered, and it really is a fun night, especially if you're a big fan of The Nightmare Before Christmas. They also tend to have some special surprises during the performance. Tickets are now on sale for this limited two-night engagement. We also got some more news about the celebrating of Mickey's 90th birthday. On October 23rd, Disney will be releasing a Blu-ray featuring popular Mickey Mouse shorts called Celebrating Mickey. The shorts included will be Steamboat Willie, The Band Concert, Mickey's Rival, Through the Mirror, Boat Builders, Brave Little Taylor, Mickey's Trailer, Tugboat Mickey, The Little Whirlwind, Mickey's Birthday Party, Pluto's Party, The Simple Things, and Get a Horse. This collection includes quite a range, with the earliest being a 1928 short, and the newest being from 2013. It was a pretty slow news week for Disney, so that's gonna do it, but I did want to mention an article that I read from the LA Times about a Disney legend and Imagineer named Raleigh Crump. If you've watched old episodes of the Disneyland TV series, you've probably seen Raleigh working on projects like the Museum of the Weird for the Haunted Mansion and many others. If you've listened to Disney Coast to Coast for any period of time, you know that I love Disney. But I'll often tell people to take off their Disney blinders, and that having an honest opinion or disliking something that the Walt Disney Company produces doesn't make you a bad Disney fan. It makes you a multi-dimensional human being that recognizes when things could be better, or we as an audience aren't being respected. Raleigh shares some fascinating stories and thoughts in this article that are simply that. Truthful. I highly suggest reading the article. I'll be sure to include a link to it in this episode's description. Before we get going, I just want to remind you that this Wednesday on September 19th, it is the first night of Mickey's Halloween party over at the Disneyland Resort. And of course, we've got to get to this week's Twitter poll. I asked you guys if you could reboot any of the following Disney afternoon shows, which would it be? And your options were Bonkers, Goof Troop, Gargoyles, or Gummy Bears. Now in last place, with only 2% of the vote, was Bonkers. And frankly, that doesn't really surprise me. Do any of you even remember Bonkers? I feel like it was a very small show. But then in second place, with 15% of the votes, was Gargoyles. Gummy Bears got 21% of the votes, and overwhelmingly Goof Troop wins with 62% of the votes. I do want to give a shout out to at Voiceless Me on Twitter who suggested Gummy Goyles, a mashup of gummy bears and gargoyles. That could be kind of interesting. 
I want to remind all of you that all of our social media can be found over at DisneyCoastToCoast.com, so make sure you're following us there to get everything you can from Disney Coast to Coast. Also, head on over to iTunes, leave that five-star rating and review, and help other Disney fans find the show so much more easily. I saw that some of you did go over there and leave a five-star rating for Disney Coast to Coast, so thank you so much for doing that. It's very much appreciated. Unfortunately, you didn't leave a written review, so I don't know what your username is, so I can't give you a shout-out, but I thank you regardless. This episode of Disney Coast to Coast was produced by Philip Elke, who has supported the show through Patreon. Now, if you'd like to become a DCTC producer or gain other rewards, more information can be found at patreon.com slash DCTC. But for now, folks, have a magical day. Bye! Thanks for watching Disney Coast to Coast! Have a magical day! <laughs> Disney Coast to Coast is produced and hosted by Jeff DePauly. Learn more about the podcast and become a supporter at... DisneyCoastToCoast.com